So quickly, just to let you know, a uh, new folder structure. You can move the folder wherever you like, uh, but don't change any subfolders or move stuff around. It's been causing some problems. I've added in a debug batch mode. What that's going to do is write out a log file, uh, hopefully with any errors or problems uh, that you might run into. Um, and it will basically, as you load videos in, do lots of things, it will output a ton of stuff. It's fairly distracting. Um, but yeah, it, it's useful uh, for debugging purposes. It will create a log and you can send that through if you run into a lot of problems. Uh, so I'll close this and you see as it closed down, you can just hit the key there and that's where the file goes. You can see this is the log that it creates. You can open that in the text editor. And yeah, there's a ton of boring stuff in there, um, but hopefully useful if we need to debug it. Normal running the file, you just run uh, exe and it'll be taking you through uh, features and new stuff that's been added in. It takes a few seconds to start, shouldn't take too long. It's taking forever. Um, so it's drag and drop uh, as usual. So you can drag photos on um, and then step through them. Um, you can drag straight frames as well. And uh, you can drag on videos. So you just drag on to the top. Now, when you drag a video that hasn't been extracted like that, because obviously the stills kind of have, they don't have a video to extract it from, um, you can extract it. There's two modes to do this. Uh, there's a time mode and a frames mode. So basically this is very simple in it. You extract one frame every 24 frames. This can be useful for high frame rate, uh, slow-mo footage, drones, that kind of thing. Time is basically extract a frame every uh, nth second. So this is a seven and a half second. Change that to one. You'll notice my total frames, so every one second, I've got a 97.2 second clip, so that's only going to give me 97 frames. I can lower this, so I can put 20 in here, but I can't put 100, it just won't let me do it. So I've limited that so you can't create you know, lots of errors by trying to extract like that. Uh, so say we just extract 20 frames, just run the extract button here, that's going to create a subfolder uh, with underscore frames in it based off the video. So the video name is quite important to the process uh, and it makes it easier to track what's going on because you can just list everything in there. Once you've extracted some frames, you'll see the frame count here changes to number of frames. And we can run that through preview. Um, we've added in a new feature, seam offset, so you can actually change where the middle is. That doesn't get baked into the extracted frames. It happens further down when we do cube map. 360 splitting basically. Um, you can change formats between JPEG and PNG. I recommend PNG just because you don't lose data. Uh, there's also this GPU acceleration. Turn this off, run the same extract. You'll notice down the bottom left here it's using CPU instead of GPU. And that's useful to also notice if it's fallen back because there's a missing DLL or something like that. It's been really uh, challenging trying to get this to work. Uh, so I've tried to make it fall back to the CPU wherever it can. It won't fail, it just will take longer uh, at the same time. Doing. So when you hit GPU acceleration, it should tell you the graphics card and the driver and it's enabled and so on. That fails, none of it's what it is. Uh, I'm going to just try and get this to work. So what I'm going to do is I've got these frames here, uh, which is quite useful for showing this implementation. And I'm just resetting them back to the original. So if I drag these frames on there, you'll see we've still got the offset applied. So if I set them back to zero, we're good there. Walking along Cecil Court, London, some people and cycles going past. So um, in the segmentation model, you've got categories. So you can pick and choose what you want. In this case, I'm just going to turn off bicycle and I'm just going to leave it on people. Um, and then you've got the model type which is basically time over precision. So the lower the more device it is, the longer it's going to take. Confidence, which is basically how confident uh, is the value that it's a person, whatever the category is it's trying to select. And then mask size is kind of like mask dilate, which will expand the mask, shrink it, depending on the value in here. 
Uh, that's useful when it doesn't get certain edges like feet, shoes, or bits of hat, and stuff like that. And then we've got detection, between standard and hearts and ultra, and it basically, again, it, it's using multiple passes uh, the higher you go. Uh, so if we leave it on enhanced, and basically you run this. Now this will warn you uh, if you're using images only because you don't have a way to extract back over. But um, when you rerun it, it's looking at the RGB. So you don't have to re-extract every time. This is just a warning that it's going to modify these files. Basically. Um, now you'll see a little initializing GPU message down the bottom. It's going to have a think about it uh, and then it should get going. So you'll see it now says GPU masking as well. If it falls back, it'll just say CPU, it'll do the same things. Got an estimate down here of how long I think it's going to take. This is sort of based on the average five frames or something that it's processing, because it jumped around a lot in there if I was doing it by every frame. Um, so you can actually drag this, and you'll see frames that it has done will update the mask. Now the issue we have is it's found this person here, but it hasn't found the bike. So you can see, if we actually go to frame output, it's not collected a bike. So then I realized I had lots of different categories and I can manage those. So if you go back to settings, turn on bicycle. Okay, that, so that's run through, took 55 seconds to do. Uh, right, again, that warning might become annoying, just put it in the comments if it's too much, but I wanted to make sure you were aware that we're overwriting the alphas of those files. So again, this will start spinning out, and it hopefully, uh, once it gets going, you see it's starting to overwrite the frames up here. And we get to the bike. Yeah, you see the whole bike is now being masked out, which is quite useful. Now, one thing on this particular capture, because I'm being masked here, what I ended up doing was like two heights um, and three rows, I think, along the street. Um, but because I was walking straight down with the camera held out in front of me, keeping everything kind of parallel, you end up creating quite a large um, breakdown in the back here because of this mask. So in hindsight, as always, these things are good to test. Uh, I would sort of recommend doing zigzag pans and swinging the camera left and right to get down this area because because I'm stood in front of it walking back and forth uh, I ended up not getting as much detail as I wanted in the back here. Buildings came out well um, but yeah it's it's just something to be aware of you can see that mask updating as it updates it. Um, yeah so once those masks are baked into the extracted images um, you can then run them out as a split uh, or as a cube map. Just to show you the cube map that's been updated to actually show you the sort of distortion. So this is the bottom of the cube, that's the top of the cube. Uh, so if I ran this now, you'll notice that splitting is using CPU because I basically found that the multiple cores of a CPU could be batched upon. And so it's actually way, way faster than just sending a single one to the GPU. So we'll get the same thing, frame split, name in there, and then there's the cube app. Now you can see that mask has carried on through and you'll get the same alpha splitting. You can add in extra masks here by turning these on as well. Um, but I thought this was a useful way of displaying it so you get a sense of what that looks like. And then also say I want to split him down into the middle. Just do that seam offset. Uh, and then run the split options again. And you'll see that shifted over now. So that can be kind of useful if you want to maintain possible uh, and then if I just did a standard split here say I would increase this to 50 the overlap split all the images that should uh, yes the splits coming in so again that's maintaining those mask alphas throughout the pipeline uh, so if you end up adding your own at the start on the extracted images all of that will carry through to end. Uh, the language button, let's move down the bottom here, that switches between language support, hopefully that's working. I've shortened a few things to make sure that the UI doesn't jump around too much. 
Uh, other useful features are we've got mask capacity, uh, which is only for when you're using these masks, but can be quite useful uh, when you're trying to figure out what's behind the mask. Um, and we can still do our split selected frames only, so you can put a frame range in here. That's quite useful if you turn this off and then split a certain frame, you will merge just the specific uh, split frames into the folder. So if you were trying to animate it or move it, you can do it a few frames at a time. It's a bit rudimentary, but it, it's sort of what we're looking for. So that's just a quick rundown of all the features that we have added to the 1.6 version. Uh, please have any feedback onto the video, uh, any comments or features uh, you feel needed. Uh, please let me know, and thanks for supporting.